In the year 2021, as part of the um, usual uh, tour of a country, we made a Moldova tour, which resulted in a seven or eight episode Moldova series. And that tour was triggered by the snap elections held uh, in the country on July the 11th, uh, 2021. And during that series, we uh, revealed uh, throughout the, uh, the episodes various elements of uh, Moldova's uh, recent history. We went to its most important towns. We went into the separatist area. We also discussed quite a bit of uh, campaign finance and all sorts of other uh, aspects. But what we didn't do thoroughly enough, I mean, I showed you then uh, several um, uh, campaign uh, uh, related rallies and so on and so forth. But what we didn't do thoroughly enough then was to discuss what the parties have actually promised. And one of the reasons I didn't do that then was because uh, it not only it would have been a, a bit too complicated, but also, generally speaking, election campaigns are better discussed in a more relaxed um, setting uh, when the tensions have died out and especially after uh, most people's emotions have uh, flattened, essentially. And since it's been over two years since that election, I feel that uh, as part of the propaganda basement, we could uh, start going through <clears throat> what I gathered during that election campaign over two years ago. And now we can look through it because uh, most of the people that have run then are either no longer in politics, some of them in jail, and then and as such we can uh, more easily evaluate uh, what has come out of uh, those promises. And of course, in the case of the winners, we get to um, evaluate their promises against, well, their record in government. Uh, what I can assure you is that nobody comes off positive <laughs> from such an analysis. Let's explore. Hello everyone and welcome to the 44th episode of the Propaganda's Basement and the second episode of season 3 of this wonderful and oftentimes boring show because of course it's a show where we read newspapers and unlike most of previous shows and most of the uh, episodes in this season indeed <clears throat> the, in this episode we're actually going to read old new propaganda. This is only two years and something old and uh, it still feels like reading newspapers from uh, the 1990s at best, largely because uh, in most other places the election campaign is uh, rarely fought in big newspapers, but the uh, mm, campaign for the 2021 snap parliamentary snap election in Moldova was exactly fought like this. So let's start with some of the losers, shall we? Uh, because it's fun that way. Uh, so this newspaper, uh, The Power is in the Truth, uh, belongs to the Renato Usati um, electoral bloc. Now, uh, those of you who haven't seen the Moldova series, I suggest you do see that one first because I'm not going to um, rehash every detail about who is who. I'm just going to assume uh, that um, this esteemed audience has at least a vague idea about uh, what I'm talking about. So this guy is uh, that guy who wanted to be president and then wasn't and suddenly endorsed Maya Sandu in uh, 2020. Uh, former mayor of Bult. Uh, at this moment, when this newspaper was uh, edited, he was still mayor of Bult. And um, as I was mentioning in the series about Moldova, he came up with this wonderful idea of creating an electoral bloc, thus making uh, the threshold for his fraction to get into the parliament higher than the usual 5%, which to those of us who actually understand politics signaled that he basically wanted to do roughly the same thing as he did during the presidential campaign, namely that he didn't really want to get in. 
On the other hand, one convincing argument that maybe he did is because he uh, spent a lot of money printing these newspapers and there were plenty of them. In fact, they were far more accessible than the newspapers of uh, the larger, but the two large political parties, namely the Communists and the Action and Solidarity Party, the, the first two biggest uh, political forces in Moldova, both at the time and now. Uh, nevertheless, um, <clears throat> It's quite fascinating to look through this uh, newspaper. Of course, I'm not going to read everything from here. In fact, I'm going to try my best not to read too much because uh, reading in Romanian and translating it uh, simultaneously in English is not particularly fun. Uh, nevertheless, um, <clears throat> uh, here is uh, some justification. Why is the electoral bloc Renato Usati participating at the parliamentary elections on July the 1st? Uh, we participate in order to ensure the uh, exit of our country from the crisis and offer Moldova an efficient government and place the state on the path of stable development. After many years uh, of persecutions and repressions from the uh, captured state regime, this political force comes back on its legitimate place uh, and the legitimate and worthy place in Moldovan politics. This bloc is the guarantor of stability and the development of the country. <laughs> uh, I should have brought my honk nose. Uh, such a force is necessary to Moldova in general and the fraction of this uh, party is necessary to the parliament. Uh, we're, we do not have a, an East versus West fight in Moldova. We're having a fight between uh, the oligarchical power that uh, was born in the 1990s and was consolidated during the times of uh, Voronin and then uh, luxuriantly flourished under the domination of Vladimir Pachodnyuk and ex-president Igor Dodon and the uh, partner and their ally Ilan Shore on one side and those who want to definitively and irreversibly um, demonetize, I think, or demolish, I guess, the oligarchical and corrupt power on the other side. I, some words are missing. Uh, against the forces of the past, uh, there, are there are different forces that are fighting, but only two political forces can actually go into the parliament, and one of those is the Renato Usate bloc. Well, we cannot, uh, you should not in principle vote the representatives of the mafia and you cannot leave them uh, uh, the chance of restitution to the uh, thieves and authors of various schemes of the Kuliokarils and the contraband people. Uh, you have to vote uh, for those who oppose the mafia and for those who want to uh, rid Moldova of oligarchs. Now, in fact, you will see throughout the campaign materials that will be going through <clears throat> in uh, this episode that this uh, undercurrent of anti-corruption message um, is uh, pretty much all present in all parties. Uh, and that's how you know none of them mean it, because uh, when you have... Uh, uh, I mean, to be fair, the, the electoral bloc Renato Osate had a small chance, but had a, a chance of getting into the parliament. So every single political force that actually had a chance of getting into the parliament had adopted some version of this uh, anti-corruption message. And um, of course, uh, none of them should have been taken seriously. Unfortunately, as always, the electoral, the electorate is not... Uh, uh, particularly smart. Nevertheless, <clears throat> probably the only thing smart in this, uh, uh, are in this newspaper is this part. Uh, it asks here, who will the electoral bloc Renato Satri ally in the new parliament? Uh, and it basically says, we'll see what happens. Uh, we're not going to discuss this now. Uh, at the end of the day, we have much in common with both the so-called right and both the so-called left. Friendly reminder, in Moldova, uh, the left is the pro-Russia people and the right is the people who are not with Russia. Uh, that's really, it's really that simple. And uh, this uh, aspect, uh, it tends to generate quite a lot of confusion. We'll see once we get to the communist newspapers and the... Uh, uh, yes, of course, we have communist newspapers. I'm not joking. But we'll see when we get to the communist newspaper uh, that uh, 
uh, things are slightly more complicated when it comes to messaging, precisely because uh, communist or leftist in Moldova means just you're with Russia, uh, and uh, right wing is you're not with Russia. Other than that, there's plenty of cross pollination uh, among the parties. Um, <clears throat> so, for instance, um, you see uh, things like, yeah, there you go. Uh, regional development, uh, local public authority, the pro the three capitals project. Um, the the official presentation of our country does not have to just include its official capital Kishino, but also the capitals of the north and south, namely Bolts and Kahul. If you remember in the Moldova series, I did show you quite a bit of Bolts. Uh, we just didn't have the time to also get to Kahul. We already traveled more than two thousand kilometers. In Moldova at that time, uh, so it was just not enough time. But yes, uh, this guy was uh, basically talking from the perspective of a relatively successful mayor of Bolts. And as I was saying about cross pollination, this is probably the funniest part. What is the doctrine of the electoral bloc Renato Usate? Um, we are a political force that doesn't have a doctrine, and that we uh, enjoy the trust of many people uh, with different political views. Uh, this bloc is supported by both the left and the right and the center and the pro-Western people and the pro-Eastern people. It is a populist, uh, or oh, sorry, a popular, I guess, uh, bloc uh, because it reflects and expresses the interests of the people. Remember next time when you hear this from centrists. Uh, currently, no political party in Moldova has a classical doctrine. Uh, liberals are not in fact liberals. The socialists are not exactly socialists. Democrats are not Democrats. Uh, and this is the same tendency all over the world. Uh, there is not a single pure doctrine left. Communists, liberal, socialist, uh, Christian Democrat or conservative. They have all uh, mixed and uh, bundled together. Uh, for example, in Germany, the former political adversaries, uh, um, the Social Democrats and the Christian Democrats now constitute together in the Bundestag the majority that forms and approves uh, a new gover a a common government. Uh, well, not anymore, but it was true at the time. Uh, we are Democrats because we are in favor of free and fair elections, the rule of law and effective state institutions. We are liberals because for us the, the rights and liberties of humans are not uh, empty talk. We are socialists because we recognize the key role of the state in the process of, de uh, of economic development and insurance of social equity. There we go. Uh, we are conservative because we are in favor of uh, keeping the traditions of the Moldovan society. We take from every pure doctrine whatever is good in it and apply it in uh, our correct conditions. Uh, the fact that the so-called right tries to uh, just tries to portray the, our electoral bloc as being in bed with the left and the other way around too is only a confirmation of the truth that this bloc is neither leftist nor rightist but represents a third independent force that firmly stays on the on its own feet and goes uh, on its own towards the uh, stated goal which is to Find, to create a, a state that is uh, uh, that observes the rule of law, that is viable and effective, and acts in the interest of the majority of the people. Uh, to maintain their political positions, most per, most characters in the Moldovan politics are intentionally divide, intentionally and cynically dividing the population into groups that confront each other and organize uh, poli geopolitical battles of everyone against everyone. Our force is a centrist force that does not accept extremes. Uh, we evolve in as a tampon of, as, as intermediary between the poles. Uh, which uh, help different parts of society, of the divided society, find a new common language and interact with each other. We are the third force, the moderate force that pronounces for the consolidation of Moldovan state uh, and for the independent development of Moldova and uh, reciprocity, well, mutually advantageous collaboration of our country uh, as uh, as well as with Western partners and Eastern partners. Uh, yes, um, this is uh, standard. Uh, ordo liberalism, as it is called uh, in uh, among the uh, politologists in uh, Germany, um, much to everyone's not surprise, uh, this kind of messaging uh, had um, no success. <laughs> Essentially, uh, the electorate was like, "Yeah, doesn't sound uh, 
like a good idea, so probably not. Um, right, and then uh, other than that, of course, it has um, uh, all sorts of uh, promises. Uh, some of them are actually quite ludicrous. Uh, others, meh, whatever. Uh, there you go. The, 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 so you know we are not socialists. Meanwhile, uh, every uh, county should have should have at least one state pharmacy and one social uh, store that sells food, um, because uh, the pensioners and the families with many children and people of limited financial possibilities, poor essentially, orphans, war veterans. Uh, blah, 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 blah. It is immoral to make money on the back of the pensioners and poor people and uh, uh, even more when the state cannot uh, uh, afford uh, a, a real support. If we can't help them at the very least, don't rob them, he says. Uh, there you go. So uh, this is um, standard socialism. <laughs> uh, this idea that if you make a profit off of selling uh, a product or a service to poor people, then that means you're robbing them. <clears throat> of course, with total lack of understanding that if there is no profit to be made, then that product would not exist to begin with. Um, it, but it goes even more. Um, medicine dispenser in every village, uh, state farmer's market. Uh, there, has, um, uh, there should be no village in Moldova that is not uh, connected to um, transportation that uh, connects them at the very least to the county center. Now this one is fair, but uh, I suppose what they didn't take into account is that uh, this has already been accomplished by the market. There is a marshrutka going in every single corner of Moldova. Now, of course, not all of them are highly convenient, but they're all cheap, uh, and they're cheap even um, compared to the local purchasing power, let alone uh, uh, for the purchasing power that I had uh, or I have whenever I go there. Uh, the median uh, pension in Moldova is only 23% of the uh, median wage. Uh, the absolute minimum for a pensioner is 1800 lei and uh, since uh, 20, 2014 it hasn't been indexed, whatever, it's standard um, Eastern European social democrat discourse uh, or leftist or whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> What's more interesting is this one, uh, it, wants, uh, it wanted uh, the reinstitutionalizing of the state with a new constitution um, it wanted people with double citizenship or double nationality to have uh, uh, positions in the supreme leadership of the state uh, and also in law enforcement and uh, uh, police. Now that's interesting because Mr. Wusati has at least three passports. <laughs> so <laughs> you know that he didn't mean it. Um, yeah, but, and of course the standard pro-Russian st stuff, uh, uh, our army is neutral blah 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 um there you go the uh, there's something about ecology as well because um the green stuff the extreme green stuff that you're seeing in the west these days is, uh, is not exactly western and it's not exactly new it all started in the <clears throat> propaganda laboratories and agitprop departments of the soviet union uh, at least 45 years ago if not more uh, in fact, I did show several times on social media a picture uh, with um, eco-Marxist propaganda that somehow remained up in some remote village of Moldova. You know, the um, usual trope that the forests are the lungs of the planet. Yeah, that's a, that, that's a Soviet talking point. <laughs> um, and uh, it's quite funny nowadays when uh, um, Western conservatives are discovering some really, really messed up shit uh, among green parties and among green followers and they're like, well, the hell did this come from? The answer is the Soviet Union. So uh, there's that. Um, there's a, there you go, some uh, fact-checking and uh, combating disinformation. Uh, our bloc will be, uh, for sure be in the parliament, but who and for whom uh, is being published uh, some uh, fake uh, uh, polls? Well, as it turns out, the polls weren't fake. Uh, in fact, the polls were um, quite generous in comparison to uh, <clears throat> um, to the real uh, uh, results that ended up uh, being delivered by the Moldovan people. So there's that. Um, 
this one is uh, quite fun uh, in 2021 so there is go the employees of the rail uh, state railway company must elect themselves a very uh, professional uh, leader so uh, this is again uh, the uh, standard um, uh, syndicalist worldview essentially that the workers are to have a say in how an enterprise is being run um, whatever but in 2021 the situation was critical if you remember even during the um, mm, the Moldovan series, I, uh, I included several interviews with these marginal candidates uh, who all had very strong opinions about the state railway company. Now, it is true that in 2021, the situation was critical uh, in the sense that nothing was running, uh, with the exception of the uh, train belonging to Kresaliznitsia, which is the Ukrainian state railways company uh, connecting Kishino to Odessa. Nothing else was running. There was not a single train uh, going through Moldovan railways, and it was uh, quite a quite a depressing sight at the um, Kishino Central Railway Station. In the meantime, things have improved, uh, admittedly, due to dire circumstances. But still, uh, after Russia's escalation in Moldova, now uh, there's plenty of trains going through the Moldovan railways, and there's plenty of money being uh, um, uh, set aside from. Uh, Mm, both uh, Romania and uh, to a lesser extent, but still also from uh, various Evropejski Soyuz um, affiliated institutions. Nevertheless, so yeah, there you go. The, <clears throat> the only serious uh, argument in favor of Mr. Wusate uh, is left on the uh, second to last page, which is uh, belts before and after, which is basically his accomplishment, uh, the development of the uh, uh, of the city of Bolt uh, under his leadership. And as I said, he was a relatively uh, successful mayor. You gotta give him that. Uh, nevertheless. So yeah, this is the first uh, uh, loser. All right. Enough with this one. Probably this video will be pretty long because the pile is <laughs> pretty big. Next. The Dignity and Truth Platform. Uh, read and give it to someone else. Uh, the diaspora is voting the Dignity and Truth Platform, says a protest sign, which turned out to be utter nonsense. The diaspora preferred the Action and Solidarity Party. Now, uh, I knew this in 2021 as well, but if I had said so uh, then, I would have uh, got myself even more into trouble. Uh, I already got into trouble with a lot of people who then um, a year or two later came up uh, to me and said, well, I'm sorry, I guess you were right. Um, during the election, uh, during the election campaign, we covered it uh, in a very critical way. That is to say, we mocked every single participant. And yes, that includes the darling Maya Sandu, who, yes, I still don't like. <laughs> um, but at the same time, we also did say that, yeah, probably they'll win and they'll probably govern and it'll probably be relatively terrible. But I guess their supreme argument will be that uh, they're less terrible than the competition. And it turned out to be somewhat like that. Nevertheless, uh, before, at, at the moment of uh, this uh, newspaper being edited, uh, the parliament was much more divided and the so-called right wing uh, had uh, two parties in it, the Action and Solidarity, which eventually won, and these guys, the D Dignity and Truth Party, um, and who also tried to run as a separate party because uh, the Action and Solidarity refused the uh, pre-election coalition with them. And they say that they were the guarantors of a pro-EU uh, government. Um, Meanwhile, um, Mrs. Maya Sandu basically threw these guys under the bus uh, for her and her party's political and financial benefit, which, of course, is something that, uh, as someone who observed politics from the inside for so, for so long, I perfectly understand. I, I probably would have done the same thing. But nevertheless, it felt like utter betrayal uh, to m so many of the uh, intellectuals and other uh, naive people uh, in not just Moldovan politics. It was uh, uh, regarded as something quite atrocious to do. But nevertheless, it was easily forgotten because, again, political expedience uber alles. There you go. Same thing. Uh, we... Uh combat poverty and we generate uh, well-being or wealth, I guess. Uh, we strengthen the health system. 
uh, we bring good changes uh, through education and culture. Uh, there you go. Ah, well, this is this is the funniest thing. I mean, for this one alone, and they deserve they deserved to lose. Uh, we're guaranteeing the launching of this country project, Educated Moldova. <laughs> Uh, those who are from Romania probably already know why I laughed, but uh, for our friends uh, uh, who are not accustomed to this little part of the world, um, in about a year or so, I mean, it's middle of October when I'm taping this, in about a year or so, there will be the end of the term of uh, the Romanian president, Klaus Johannes. Uh, one of the things he promised when he was first elected, almost 10 years ago, uh, was the country project Educated Romania. Uh, because of his background as a teacher, whatever, it was assumed that he'll know what he's doing, or at the very least may have a good strategic idea. Under him, the education system could turn significantly worse. So therefore, uh, the whole idea of educate, uh, of that project uh, became a meme in and of itself. Even some of his supporters uh, main, uh, are starting to, well, you know, come on, it was a failure. Yes, of course, it was a failure. So when you come with the exact same talking point in Moldova, especially now as uh, more and more Moldovans are much better connected to the political realities on um, the right side, uh, of the Pruto River as well, not just the left side. Uh, they, of course, uh, understand that uh, they, they get the reference and they're like, yeah, that's a Romanian meme. Uh, please don't bring memes uh, on our side of the Pruto River as well. Uh, so yeah, uh, let's make July 11th a national holiday. Uh, we have uh, concrete promises for all citizens, blah, blah, blah. Uh, a a coalition government between Action and Solidarity Party and the Dignity and Truth platform is the most uh, healthy options. Um, then there is some uh, paid shilling uh, from some political analyst who says that uh, getting uh, this platform into the parliament is of crucial importance. Um, <clears throat> And says here the only solution uh, uh, for uh, for Moldova to have a pro EU government is for PAS to win the elections and uh, this platform to also get into the parliament. Any other co political combination either uh, brings in the pro oligarchy groups in a position to form the new government or imposes a cohabitation of the pro presidential faction with one of the leftist forces which cannot uh, guarantee the successful implementation of various important reforms. Now, of course, this turned out to be wrong. The Action and Solidarity Party uh, nearly got itself um, a constitutional majority. Uh, well, it wasn't a constitutional majority in the end, only 63 seats out of the 101 legislative. But nevertheless, they got to form the government with a very comfortable majority uh, and uh, their operation to successfully throw this guy under the bus, under Inastasi, uh, was very successful. He got thrown on, under the bus and he stayed there. To this day, he's still a, relatively speaking, a nobody. So, yeah. Um, and of course, some more of this. The uh, pensioners are voting for our platform and the agricultures and agricultural workers, sorry, uh, the veterans and whatnot. Um, some more uh, important figures saying that they do have a point, yada, yada, yada. So yeah, uh, it was basically, um, I mean, again, by Moldova standards, this is considered a right-wing platform because it's not with Russia. <laughs> and uh, because it's not with Russia, therefore, uh, is right-wing. Now, of course, it, uh, it's one of the reasons why I'm making this video now and I didn't make it uh, during uh, the election itself, during the election campaign, because now it's a lot less of a tension to say that, well, these were a bunch of fucking losers. All right, uh, let's stick with the losers first, and maybe if the video gets too long, I'll make another episode. Episode three will be with the winners, because I want to spend a little bit more time uh, for the Action and Solidarity Party and uh, the... Um, um, uh, and, and the communists and socialist uh, bloc. All right, uh, if you remember during the Moldova series, I uh, 
put in these uh, this little clip, uh, the election campaign clip with the girl being resurrected from a, a coffin. <laughs> it was, um, I mean, that, that stuck. Uh, it didn't bring them votes. They got 0, 0.0 something. Um, or as we say around here, nothing point something. Uh, but nevertheless, the uh, stunt with the girl rising up from the coffin um, turned out to be a cute one. Uh, that was the party called Pace or Peace. Um, and uh, peace is not does not just stand for peace. It stands for uh, Partido la Casa Construim Europa, the party we build Europe at home. Um, and um, yeah, so this is one of their flyers, and this is their political prog uh, program. There you go. Once again, the number one: preventing corruption, uh, the implementation of the electronic fire uh, file. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> Combating corruption exclusively through jailing and confiscation. Um, well, actually, this doesn't make the entire sense in Romanian either. But basically, they want to jail people uh, who can't justify their wealth, and especially if they've been um, in a position uh, to, of having worked from, for the state. Number two, um, placing the health of the people among the state's priority. Building five big hospitals uh, in uh, the counties, uh, remote medicine and, me and a doctor in your village at, at European standards. Number three, doubling the budget for education, uh, the modernization of the didactical base, I suppose that they mean schools and materials, uh, and also of the curricula and the software used, uh, and also increase the salaries and maybe some decent uh, scholarships. Uh, business, 0%, uh, zero taxes for reinvested profit and the uh, agricultural subsidies will be granted in at three days at the most. Yeah, this is essentially impossible. Uh, there's no way a state bureaucracy can work that fast. Um, so there's that. Um, <clears throat> Raising the prestige of the of the of law enforcement and uh, a social package, a social benefit, essentially, uh, at EU standards with a minimum wage of ten thousand lei. Uh, yeah, ten thousand lei. That's a lot of money. That's about uh, uh, well, actually, it's not that much money, uh, but uh, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> um, the mobile. Uh, office of the public services so yeah this is basically this one is in fact an obsession of the political class uh, in uh, Moldova um, the degree of techno optimism practiced in Moldova is one that is quite astounding uh, there's only one other place where you can see this degree of techno optimism and that place is Estonia and the reason uh, it's happening in Estonia is because um, in Estonia, there is something called the Estonian Mafia, which is a misnomer because they're not actually a mafia. They're basically the people who made Skype and grifted Microsoft for a lot of money. And they, they use that money to lobby the state institutions so they can get exclusive contracts on all sorts of digitalization grifts. Uh, so as a result, you have a high degree of techno-optimism in the Estonian administration. Well, it's pretty much the same thing in Moldova. Uh, everyone who didn't get... Uh, any tech grift uh, here in Romania, basically they're trying their luck in Moldova and they get a lot more success there uh, because, well, apparently the, their political class is not that good at uh, spotting uh, these grifters. Uh, on social policy, the families with three or more children will get uh, um, subsidies, I guess, um, payments, social payments of uh, 9,000 lei. Uh, yeah, so the 9,000 9, lei, uh, well, is it monthly? Yeah, monthly. Uh, yeah, that's something which, again, the Moldovan state just couldn't afford, really. I mean, uh, again, it's a huge effort to pay the pensioners 2,000 lei, so giving uh, almost five times as much um, to young working people, effectively. Uh, probably that's unaffordable. Uh, let's establish a report here, too. Uh, 9,000 lei uh, is... Uh, about four hundred and fifty dollars, right? So when they say that they want to pay the 
police officers of minimum of ten of, uh, of ten thousand leia. That's about five hundred dollars, maybe a bit more than that. It's like seventeen point something when I'm taping this. Seventeen point something lay for uh, a dollar. I don't know how much is in euro because I don't think in Deutschmarks. <clears throat> uh, diaspora, um, a unique office for consultancy, a state plan for reintegration. Uh, for two years for upon uh, upon repatriation or in steps before uh, repatriation for old people they are I seriously I mean I hadn't seen this so you know <laughs> this is text at first sight for me as well uh, they're basically uh, trying to uh, were thinking about re, re giving the uh, a program that existed immediately after the fall of the Soviet Union uh, basically on a fixed exchange rate uh, one Soviet ruble for one Moldovan leu uh, for every person that in 1992 uh, lost their money at the uh, uh, economy bank economy bank was the economy bank of the Soviet Union and those who had uh, uh, kept their money at that bank well tough luck who knew uh, for national minorities, uh, we want to consolidate this totality and preserve our cultural diversity. So there you go. It's, it's even uh, so. You know, progressivism is conservative in Moldova. Uh, there is a struggle to preserve the cultural diversity. Meanwhile, in the West, uh, it's the other way around. Let's create it. Uh, so you know, as always, uh, as uh, me and Victor have told you in one of our last World So Far reports. Um, Y'all in the West are now all living in the in Eastern Europe. You just don't know it yet. And there you go. Here's some evidence for that. In any event, I also carried from that campaign uh, a calendar from these people. <laughs> and the reason I carried it is because it's the one of the most useless ones that I've seen. I mean, who makes a calendar that starts in July? Like, really? Why? Why would you do that? So it's, you know, it's from July 2021 to June 2022, the most useless thing possible. Usually during elections, I do take calendars from parties and just use them for myself in my office. Uh, but this one is useless and uh, because, it, because it was useless, yeah, I'm gonna keep this one for the propaganda basement. All right, <clears throat> uh, next losers. Yeah, this one is fun. Uh, the Common Action Party of the Civic Congress. <laughs> um, so yeah. Uh, this political party was really, really funny. Um, they, to the best of my knowledge, uh, this was a money laundering operation uh, because there is no way you can seriously believe that this could have had any success. And um, the main indicator is that uh, their entire political manifesto, because again, this is their manifesto, is basically pass man bad. Right, Maya Sandu man bad. That's it. I mean, even the commies had at least their own proposals for shit. But these guys know. Um, the whole thing is um, uh, exclusively uh, we can do. We can outpass the pass essentially. Yeah, there you go. So what is pass proposing? And there you go. Okay, let's take this one. We're gonna clean up the justice system and state institutions so they can work for uh, people and in the public interest and not against them we will insist on rules and fewer taxes predictable taxes uh, in consulting with the business um, with industry and uh, equally observed by all in uh, con conditions of uh, under conditions of real competition that's what this political party says that pass is proposing in fact they make pass sound even more liberal than they actually were um, and then they put uh, against it what we propose. We propose uh, a mercy, merciless punishments for acts of corruption, including up to life imprisonment, uh, the confiscation of the wealth of functionaries uh, if uh, their value does not correspond to their official income. Uh, the particular attention should be paid to the fortunes of their relatives, including uh, those that are not blood related. Um, a, a lifetime ban to, um, uh, from ever running for public office, a uh, drastic reduction of the numbers of uh, permissive acts and total elimination of the so-called referral norms uh, that are not existed in the, uh, uh, that are not existent in the law. Uh, referral norms, I, I think they, they mean 
um, various uh, exemptions awarded basically by a bigger boss in the bureaucracy, um, exemptions from uh, various um, legal provisions. Uh, massive digitalization, there you go. Massive digitalization of public services and the evaluation of the activities uh, through a mobile app. I have an app for that. Do you have an app to take a shit? Uh, don't inst you don't have to install it right now. That's basically these people. And that's basically mo almost all of the parties in Moldova. As I said, the level of techno optimism among, especially among the Moldovan political class is quite astounding. Um, Working for the state in Moldova has to be responsible, prestigious, and highly appreciated from a, a wage uh, perspective. Uh, the jobs m must be in such a way that nobody wants to lose them uh, in a return for various momentary satisfactions and especially uh, lose them uh, with their liberty as well. So basically, it's a very state-centrist campaign. But what's a lot more interesting is uh, this one. Uh, it basically, it has some uh, um, opinion poll, whatever, uh, and it says here that our party, the Civic Congress, gets into the parliament. According to their civic, their poll, uh, the Action and Solidarity Party would get 45.45%, the Commies 19%, this party 10.55%, and the Renato Usate bloc that uh, I just covered uh, earlier uh, would get 10%. Now, uh, both of these were wrong. Um, actually, in Solidarity got uh, more than 55% of the votes. The commies got a lot more. These two did, barely got 2% together. <laughs> so, um, there's that. Uh, nevertheless, they argue here that the convincing growth of uh, uh, our party um, resets the vision on Moldovan politics. Uh, the community of experts are actively discussing about the polling... Uh, uh, the poll published by Votum.md, where our party is the, uh, has the third uh, is third in the top in the preferences of the electorate. Uh, the news portal eNews.md decided to ask uh, one of the founders of our uh, political party what is the growth, uh, blah blah blah, and he complains that the ma the mainstream media doesn't uh, take him into account and uh, doesn't want to talk to him and whatnot. Uh, now I'm not. Uh, uh, one of those people to actually trust politicians or the mainstream media. So it may indeed be the truth. Uh, it may indeed be, have been true that the mainstream media was ignoring him because they had something against him, you know, as a conspiracy, whatever. But it may have also been have been the case that his political party was indeed irrelevant. Nevertheless, printing these things was quite expensive. So, you know, the political parties in Moldova really paid... Um, a lot of money for this election campaign. Yeah, another example of this. Maybe I should give some of these as prizes, uh, especially these ones. I think I have three or four of them. Um, right. All right. Uh, this one is from Pass. We're going to have to wait. Told you I have a lot of these. <laughs> Commies. No, this one will have to wait. All right. Let's get to the last loser. Uh, so this is an election campaign paper um, for um, for the for the far right, eff effectively. These guys, uh, the uh, Alliance for the Unification of Romanians, uh, is a political party. They were the first ones to try. Um, is a political party that is from Romania, but then created. Uh, a version of themselves in Moldova as well and uh, attacked the parliamentary elections. Um, unfortunately for them, they made several mistakes during their campaign and eventually most of their voters went to Action and Solidarity Party. Uh, or the other way around, Action and Solidarity Party played so well that managed to convince uh, the far right uh, to vote for them rather than the far right party. Uh, so there's that. Uh, of course, uh, under no uh, no surprises here, the newspaper Timpul, uh, which has always been a, a very nationalistic, a Romanian nationalistic uh, newspaper in Moldova, decided to um, dedicate an entire issue to uh, this political party. The headline here, they've killed our ancestors. Over 1.5 million Moldovans were killed by the commies. Let us never forget the evil 
uh, the terrorist, the communist terrorists and socialists have done to the Romanian people, as I said, a very um, nationalistic uh, tone. Not that this is wrong, it is true that the commies committed those crimes, uh, but still. So yeah, there you go. Uh, vote for the alliance, choose Romania. They're very upfront about it. Uh, it's a, basically a campaign newspaper. They rented the, uh, the newsroom. Um, and it's all about history, really. The first Soviet, so Soviet uh, occupation, the second Soviet occupation, uh, the total human casualties, more uh, logos for, uh, for the alliance. Um, it's time to be our, honest with ourselves and approach this campaign, uh, this election campaign, as an honest exercise of uh, uh, the will to uh, unify. Uh, the Alliance for the Unification of Romanians is a political party that exists on both uh, sides of the Prut River, uh, and it represents, uh, in, at this point, the only Romanian parliamentary po political party that actually crossed the borders. A vote for them represents a vote for the idea of unification, uh, the idea of g better and a vote for Romania. We clearly uh, endorse this message uh, with all of the electoral consequences uh, that derive from this. We know that there are citizens who have different political options uh, or even political proclivities, but uh, uh, the alliance is uh, addressing uh, strictly to those who identify as Romanians and consider Romania to be their country. Uh, the right to uh, peacefully uh, millet, whatever, um, protest uh, for unification was confirmed by the uh, courts both in Romania and Moldova, and this, rate is, this right is guaranteed by international law. Do you support Romania? Then you should vote for the alliance. Do you support with the globalists against the nation? Then vote for the Action and Solidarity Party. Do you support Russia and consider things should stay the same as they are now? Then vote for the socialists. It's really that simple at this point, says this uh, thing. Uh, it's interesting that these guys are routinely portrayed in the normie media as pro-Russia. They're really not, but um, the normie media and also various political and financial interests want everyone to think of themselves as uh, uh, pro-Russia because, you know, if... Uh, if people actually start reading their materials, they might agree with them and we cannot have that. Uh, nevertheless, um, and again, if that sounded as me supporting them, it's, it's a no. Actually, their political structure is <laughs> quite terrible and they totally deserved uh, the result that they got. Uh, I think they got 0.5% or something like that in, uh, in this election in uh, uh, July, uh, from July um, 2021. Uh, nevertheless, uh, yeah, so basically they campaigned on vote for us and we will achieve the unification of Moldova with uh, Romania. Yeah, this is the guy who's their president. He still is the president. He is just as competent as he was two years ago, which is to say, not really. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so basically, uh, what was I, the only thing that is important about this campaign uh, of the Alliance for the Unification of Romania is not their result. Their result was terrible and again, deservedly so. They totally deserved uh, to get shellacked in the election because they played poorly. But the only uh, silver lining in all of this is that uh, after their attempt, every single political party in Romania um, suddenly thought that it's probably a good idea to have a branch uh, in Moldova as well. Uh, so next time there will be parliamentary elections, which unless something weird happens should be in July 2025. Next time there will be parliamentary elections, it will be a lot more complicated than in 2021 because uh, now suddenly everyone will have to face uh, much better funded, much better equipped, um, in theory, at the very least, much more experienced political parties, namely the Romanian versions of um, the Moldovan versions of Romanian political parties. It will be quite fun. Um, I have to admit, I'm looking forward for it. Uh, the spectacle should be great. Um, just like in 2021, I do not expect to be directly involved in uh, any way other than as an observer and as a collector of these things. Um, so I can then. Um, use them to make to poke fun at them uh, so you know there's that uh, all right uh, I guess that will be pretty much it for this episode um, we're gonna stick around with the topic uh, of Moldovan elections in the next episode because I want to give more time to the other uh, to the the two 
big blocks, uh, namely the communists and uh, the Action and Solidarity uh, Party, uh, because uh, those ones are much more fun. Um, on one hand, because the communists actually could not stick, stick together for too long, two years after the election, uh, their fraction is in fact smaller, uh, because they could not keep uh, the terms of their alliance, and because the Action and Solidarity Party, well, it was far from a great governance, but um, that's all that could have been done. I mean, the, on the other side of the Prut River is basically the same feeling <clears throat> as it is in Romania. Atât s-a putut. That's all that could have been done. So, you know, there's that. All right. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week when we're going to evaluate the winners, I suppose. Oh, yeah. Hold on a second. Before I do that. Yeah, there's a... Uh, I forgot about this one. Oh no, I didn't. It's also about Renato Osate. Who cares? Thanks for watching. Cheers.